What's up guys, Mike here, and today we are doing something I am so excited for. If you've been watching this channel for a while, you know I've already done a video titled Five Sons of NBA Stars That Play Just Like Their Dads. Well today we are basically doing a sequel to that video, but we are taking things to the next level. Because as you've seen from the title, we are doing Five Sons of NBA Stars Who Play Better Than Their Dads. Or at least have some kind of chance to be better than their dads, you get the point. Now included on this list is LeBron James Jr. and that one's gonna be a bit of a stretch. I mean, I don't know if LBJ Jr., that was a mouthful, is going to be better than his dad, one of the arguably top three players of all time. But we looked at him in my first video and I kinda wanna do an update and I think you guys would be interested in that too. So we're saving him for last for right now. Let's start with number five, Cole Anthony. Now, Cole is the son of Greg Anthony, NBA commentator and one-time player for the Vancouver Grizzlies, which is something that Cole probably does not brag about much because the Van Vancouver Grizzlies sound like they were an ABA team that Jackie Moon used to play against. Anyway, Cole is the number one point guard in his class and as you can see, he plays the game with force. Looking at this, at the point guard spot, not only does he have great dribble moves and already a solid IQ, but you can see sometimes when opponents take the ball to the rim, Cole is there for a SWAT. Oh my god. Just looking at these clips, you can see that Cole has all of the tools to be a great NBA point guard. I mean, he's got a knockdown jumper. Again, he has great ball handling ability, so much that sometimes defenders fall and boom there's that jumper and i'm not the only one who thinks that cole could be the perfect type of point guard in the new nba his dad greg anthony senior has said i think he has the chance to be the prototype for how the point guard position is played at the highest level he's what i call a natural basketball player he's not methodical he sees it before it happens and that's a special trait that all the great players have the ability to see things two three steps ahead which are some great words but yeah those were from his dad so I guess we have to take them with a grain of salt I mean when my dad's at work all I hear him saying is man that Mike Corzemba is the best youtuber out there right now he's just all about the bits he stays out of the drama he stays out of the forests. Getting back to Cole, everything about this kid makes you want to root for him. We'll end this Cole Anthony segment with my favorite topic of discussion, work ethic. As his AAU coach has said, seeing his work ethic and his drive, it's unlike any high school player that I've seen in a very long time. A lot of guys have it, but Cole is like a machine. That's what I like to hear about my top prospects. I love to hear that they're outworking others around them. And so I'm excited to see where Cole ends up going to college. By the way, he is a junior. I did not mention that. That is my bad. And right now he's got offers from Georgetown, Kansas, UCLA, St. John's, St. John's Cole. Come to St. John's Cole. Even though we've lost like the last 20 games. Okay, let's just go to the next guy before I begin to cry. Number four, Jabri Abdur Rahim. Sophomore, caught it early this time. Jabri Abdur Rahim is the son of Sharif Abdur Rahim, a 12 season NBA veteran and an Olympic gold medalist. Now, like I said before, Cole Anthony actually has a pretty decent chance of becoming better than Greg Anthony, but in the case of Jabri, he's going to have to work very hard to become better than Sharif. Like I said, Sharif was a gold medalist. He was also an all-star and in five seasons for the Vancouver Grizzlies, Sharif averaged 20.8 points per game. Why do the Vancouver Grizzlies keep coming up? I don't think I've ever mentioned them before. Whatever. When we look at Jabri, we have to think of one thing. Potential. The kid has a ton of potential. Right now, he is already the number eight player in his class and he stands at six foot five but according to a lot of people he might have a lot of inches left to grow so if jabri goes from six foot five to something like a kevin durant around six foot eleven seven foot player yeah he's gonna be pretty unstoppable for now though just looking at his highlights we can see that he already is really really good he's able to take the ball to the basket he's able to dunk and what scouts say is the most impressive part of his game is that he already has a mid-range game developed you can see that here and I gotta say I like the swag. When you grow up as the son of an NBA father, it's easy to not work as hard as other people, but I don't think that's the case with Jabri at all. I think that he has a chip on his shoulder. Jabri himself has said, I want to be the best out of everyone so I continue to work hard so I can push to be the best out of anyone in my family, which means that he has to be a multiple time all-star averaging over 20 points per game. Obviously, we cannot be sure if that's going to happen, but I think if he can 
continues to grow, the future is going to be very bright for this kid. And if you look closely, you can see he goes to Seton Hall Prep, which is the same school my mom used to go to before I think it became an all boys school. Fun fact about me. And it also is very close to St. John's who has also offered him a scholarship. Cole and Jabri, save me from St. John's. This has become a weird type of recruiting video for St. John's, whatever. Number three, Bull Bull. Now I'm going to keep this Bull Bull segment a little short because I've already talked about Bull Bull in a previous video. Speaking of other videos, quick plug. As you guys know, this main channel is now posting every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 6 p.m. Around 6 p.m. Don't kill me exactly with the 6 p.m. time. But you might not have known that the second channel is also posting every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday at 6 p.m. We are getting back on the grind on the second channel, so make sure to go subscribe there. We just looked at what if LeBron James goes to the Houston Rockets. That was definitely a very cool video. I will leave the link down below. So make sure to go check it out. And again, subscribe. Back to Bull. As you probably know, Bull Bull is the son of Manute Bull, who was one of the tallest players in NBA history. In fact, here's a picture of Manute Bull swimming. That is not a trick of the light. That is not Photoshop. That is not Slender Man in a pool. That is Manute Bull. Kind of scary. Anyway, Bull is a little shorter. He's a tiny seven foot two. And he is a senior. He is the number four player in his class. And he's going to be playing for the Oregon Ducks next year. He was also recently named to the McDonald's All-American team. So congrats, Bull. I know you're watching this. Now, looking at Bull's game, you can see that he makes up for his very short height with his incredible wingspan. Yes, he has a seven foot eight wingspan and he uses it a lot. He is the definition of the ultimate rim protector, just blocking shot after shot at the high school level. And when it comes to dunking, I mean, he doesn't have the flashiest dunks, but you can see basically the goal of Bull's team is just get the ball to him near the basket and he can dunk as easily as I can dunk on my mini hoop. You can't see my mini hoop, but you get the point. Look at this. If he gets the right coaching, if he continues to develop, there's a chance that Bull Bull is going to be an unstoppable force in the NBA. Going even further, he is also a modern NBA center. Now, I do not think he has the footwork to switch onto NBA guards. So he's not like an Anthony Davis kind of player, but he does already have a very solid three-point shot. So at the end of the day here, no matter what, I think Bull Bull is going to have a very long NBA career. He's just too big not to. What it comes down to, again, is work ethic. And sometimes I feel like he looks like he's a little passive on the court. What I'm saying is I think he might need to toughen up a bit, but he's just an 18 year old. Obviously those things can come with time. So I've got to say there is a solid chance that Bull Bull becomes better than his father. Moving on. Number two, Nico Manny. This kid is one of the prospects I am most excited for out of anyone in high school basketball. One of the main reasons for that is his nickname, which just happens to be the Ginger Ninja. The Ginger Ninja. How could you not love this kid already? And unlike the first three guys on this list, and definitely the last one, Nico's dad did play in the NBA, but he wasn't exactly an incredible NBA player. Pace Mannion did have a six-year NBA career, but in that career, the most points per game he averaged in a season was 4.5. So if Nico can just make it into the NBA, there is a very good chance he's going to surpass his dad. Now, taking a look at his game, you can see that there are other reasons other than his nickname as to why I'm so excited for this kid. Because right now, Nico is a sophomore and he is a six foot one point guard. Already at six foot one, he has great athleticism. He has great court vision, which is very impressive for a young player like him. And really, he's just got a complete game for a high school player. He can definitely score in transition. He can score in the half court when driving the basketball. And the kid has a jump shot. He certainly proves that time and time again here. Going away from his scoring though, again, what I'm most impressed with is his basketball IQ. It seems like Nico is always making the right play on the court. He's always setting up his teammates for easy baskets and he's got that kind of court vision that just makes playing the game of basketball easier for his teammates. So right now ESPN has Nico ranked as the 22nd player in his class and he has offers from Arizona, Arizona State, Kansas, UCLA, not St. John's. But if you want to come here, we're, we're still willing. The point I was making though is this. Again, Nico is six foot one. His dad Pace is like six foot seven, six foot eight. Also, his other parent, his mom, was a pro volleyball player in Italy. So this kid's got some incredible genes and doctors have said that there is a chance that Nico grows to as tall as six foot eight. So if he becomes a six foot eight point guard, I really think he's going to take that Gordon Hayward, Anthony Davis type of leap out of high school. He's going to become one of the best prospects in the nation. And we can all have a guy in the NBA called the Ginger Ninja. Please grow Nico. Do it for the culture. And finally, number one, LeBron. 
LeBron James Jr. If you search LeBron James Jr. into Google, you will get articles such as, is 12 year old LeBron James Jr. better than his dad was at the same age? That is how good this kid is right now. Obviously playing as LeBron James' son, he has tremendous expectations and tremendous hype. He had that since the day he was born. We have seen those expectations in the past completely ruin sons of NBA players. Cough Michael Jordan's kids. I'm not even coughing Michael Jordan's kids, but it definitely appears that right now LeBron James Jr. has not melted under this pressure. In fact, he's thrived. As LeBron himself has said, at this age, I didn't handle the ball as well as he does, and he shoots it a lot better than I did. And if we just take a look at LeBron James Jr.'s highlights here, as we've been seeing, everything LeBron has been saying about his son appears to be very true. The kid definitely is already a great ball handler. He's a great passer. He has the type of court vision you just cannot teach. And it appears that he's on the way to becoming a knockdown shooter, which means to me, because he has LeBron's genes and because he's already proven to be an incredibly hard worker and again, is not really bothered by all the hype and expectations. I do think it is very possible that LeBron James Jr. is going to be playing in the NBA one day and he might even become an NBA all-star. But in my opinion, what's really going to decide how great he becomes is again, his height. When we've got kids this young, their eventual height as an 18 year old is going to dictate a lot. Looking at his highlights, you can tell that LeBron James Jr. is not the tallest player on the court. What he is, is a highly skilled basketball player, but he's going to need to grow to take that next level and get to LeBron levels of greatness. And again, LeBron is a top three player of all time. So even if he does grow to be like six foot 10, that's still going to be very difficult. But yeah, guys, that wraps up today's video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed. I love making these videos. They're always really cool to see. I really like looking at the next generation of players. That's one of my favorite parts of basketball, just following a player's career for a long time. So if you have any suggestions of videos like this that you want to see in the future, definitely comment them down below. I will be looking at every comment. And if there's a good idea, I will definitely use it and I will give you credit. Other than that, if you're new to this channel, make sure to subscribe. Again, we're doing three videos videos a week now every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at 6 p.m. And if you're already subscribed, you are awesome. We know this and as always, have an awesome day and cue that music. In the kitchen wrist, just like a stir fry. Whip it in the kitchen wrist, just like a stir fry. Whip it in the kitchen wrist, just like a stir fry. Whip it in the kitchen wrist, just like a stir fry. I'll take a whip it intermission, let the birds fly. I get money, turn no vision through my third eye. Money.